Welcome to Break It with Brandon. I'm your host, Brandon Adkins. And today, we're gonna break some stuff. So we thought it would be fun to see if we can 3D print our own golf clubs. So I had some help from Garrett. We're gonna test out three different materials today in ABS, Onyx, and we did stainless steel on the Mark Forge Metal X. So Garrett's gonna join me today so we can test these things out. Garrett, what do you got, buddy? Here's the clubs, man. Nice. Let's give them a shot. I like the look. He left the metal one open on the end, too. Yeah, don't mind the pumpkin on the bottom of it, though. That's cool. <laughs> I like it. So yeah. we got red ABS, got the onyx, and the stainless steel. And yeah, we could have done this in tool steel also. Yeah. Um, we had a lot of stainless steel laying around, so decided to do in that. And we actually used one of the new features for the Metal X that allows us to basically leave the top and bottom surfaces open. That allows it to wash a lot faster. Oh, nice. So re really reduce print time. And it looks cool. It does look cool. That is a heavy club. These ones are feeling pretty light. Let's test them out, see how they work. Let's do it. So the PLA club, like I expected, not so good. Got a little delamination there, it looks like. Yeah. But I kind of expected the whole thing to just explode. I'm a little surprised that it's still mostly together, just a little delaminated. I think that's why ABS has been one of the most common 3D printing materials. You know, it's very tough. Mm -hmm. It was really weird to swing though, too, because it's so light. It was like, I don't know, controlling the club was just way different than actually golfing. Yeah, I think I did like one millimeter wall thickness on that and like about 30, 33% infill. So it's pretty tough, but mm -hmm. very light still. Yeah, nice. I'm excited to try this Onyx one though. Yeah. The nylon, I think, with the carbon fiber, it's gonna be sweet. All right, man, how'd the Onyx do? So I gave that one a shot, took a couple of swings with it, grazed the ground a couple of times, so there's a couple <laughs> of notches out of it, but it's actually held up really well. Yeah. The layer adhesion of this nylon is just so good that even that from the impact, it did great. Yeah, way different than the ABS. It held together nice. Only damage I see is just rock chips. Yeah, rock chips. We <laughs> never, we never claim to be good golfers. All right, well, what do you say we try out the stainless steel model? Let's do it, man. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> you guys! <laughs> Is that a trick ball? <laughs> You guys got me good with the trick ball. That was pretty sweet. I, I, this is a heavy club and I thought I actually Whoa. annihilated that ball, but you got me. Awesome. But overall it worked out pretty well. I mean, it's heavy, but it swings nice. I think we could really uh, get under a golf ball with this thing, but we're going to have some more fun. Why don't we smash some stuff with it? Awesome, man. Excited to do that. Nice. That's all that's left. This is one tough club, I gotta say. We had some fun, we smashed some parts. Let's head over and break it down. Well, I have to say that was probably my most favorite design that we've done so far. We had a lot of fun with it. So, of course, 
For a golf club, the first material choice, probably not gonna work out so well. We wanted to smash some stuff, so hopefully we we're gonna get a broken golf club head out of it, which we did. So our ABS model, some significant damage you can see there. Um, we ended up taking a few more whacks at some other objects, as you saw earlier in the video, but uh, overall, this is a pretty light club. I was uh, really surprised actually that I was able to swing it as well as I could with it being so light. But uh, you know, as expected, it's not gonna last very long. This one was pretty much toast after the first hit. Lots of delamination on the ABS part. Um, you know, it is strong enough to where it could actually hold up um, without just completely exploding, which is kind of what I expected, but uh, mostly just delamination on that ABS model. So then of course, we moved on to our Onyx material. And this one actually I was, again, super impressed with. Um, you know, as always, we get nice layer adhesion on a part like this with Onyx, really good finish quality. Um, basically no signs of delamination on this part at all, which I'm really, really impressed with. So the thing about this, I mean, we could actually print a pretty functional set of clubs with this. If I was gonna go golfing with an Onyx club, I think I could actually do it. Um, the thing is, you gotta remember to try to not hit the ground, which I'm not very good at. There's a couple of rock chips taken out of this one, but if your uh, aim is pretty good and you just hit the golf ball, nine times out of 10, I guess, you'd be pretty safe with an Onyx club. So um, we've heard from some of you guys too that you wanted to learn more about the Onyx material. Uh, and its properties. So we're actually gonna post a link below to uh, one of the sessions from our design to manufacturing show that uh, we held online earlier this year. You guys can go check that out. Uh, it gets in depth with all the Mark Forge materials. So you'll be able to learn plenty more about uh, the properties of Onyx. But great material held up pretty nicely for at least testing our design. Now I will say um, if I wanted to maybe modify that club a little bit, change up the angle of the club face or something like that, just modify my design a little bit, I could actually probably get away with that pretty easily. Just print out some Onyx prototypes, which is kind of the intent behind materials like that in the first place. We get away with a less expensive design point, and then we're going to be able to move to the final material that we want to use for our design, which in our case was 17.4 pH stainless on the Mark Forge Metal X. Now this one turned out to be a beast of a club. This is a little over one pound just for the club head. So it's, it's pretty heavy. We knew it was gonna do some damage, which is kind of what we were hoping for in the first place. Um, but we took it really through all the paces that we possibly could have. We smashed just about anything that we could find uh, within reach, uh, even came down to concrete cinder blocks towards the end of it there. But, uh, pretty much no damage on the club at all. Um, did a really nice job of holding up. Obviously not a practical club. Um, you know, we wouldn't want to be swinging this thing all day on a golf course or anything like that, but it just goes to show you that, you know, you've got some flexibility in how you can take advantage of your design and leverage some of these different materials for different purposes. So we started with kind of a, a weak version of our design just to play around with it moved on to a, a stronger material that gave us a really great finish quality and a pretty functional design. And then our final version of that design after we went through some prototyping. So with that, hopefully you guys had some fun smashing a few things with us. We got to uh, take it out on the course a little bit and you got to see a, a few different use cases of our materials here. We've had a lot of fun with the Mark Forge materials and just kind of conceptually designing a few things over the last couple seasons of Break It With Brandon. In the next season, we're actually going to get into testing some other materials with a different line of printers. We'll start talking a bit more about the HP Jet Fusion printer line so we can experiment with a few of their materials and see where we end up. Thanks again for joining us on Break It With Brandon. I hope you enjoyed the show. Oh. <laughs> I suck so bad. <laughs> Those bloopers. Oh, that almost hit the phone. <laughs>